Hey guys, uh, my name is Michael Mushket. I'm the product manager here at uh, Wynick Holzer USA. I'm responsible for all our Wynick products. Um, today, uh, I want to introduce you guys to uh, Travis. How's everybody doing? Um, hey, Travis is our uh, sales manager in the Midwest Territory. And uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about a new product that we haven't showed, uh, showed you guys on any of our videos before. We're going to talk about some rip saws. And uh, uh, Travis, uh, he, he will share a little bit about his, uh, his background, but uh, Travis was a technician uh, the same way as I am uh, before we started on the, on the sales side. And so he is very uh, knowledgeable about the rip saws. So um, Travis, hey, if you just want to uh, introduce yourself real quick and uh, um, maybe just tell us what you're going to show us today. Sounds good. Thanks, Michael. Like Michael said, my name is Travis Richardson, and I uh, rep all the dealers in the Midwest. I'm a product specialist for the wine side. And um, for 13 years, I started off, I cut my teeth working on actually these rip saws. So anything from the Ryman product line is what I have a lot of experience in. And so today, I kind of wanted to walk you guys through not necessarily just the selling points of this machine, but as a technician, my experience with the machine, where I've seen these machines used, how I've seen them used, and um, for anybody that has one of our machines, maybe give you some insight into maybe some of the things you should be looking on. Maybe your, your, your machines get a little, a little bit older now, and you gotta do some preventative maintenance on it, just things to watch out for, so try to make this as well-rounded as I can. So let's start off, we'll get a general idea of what this machine is for some of you that don't have a rip saw or know what this machine is. But what it is, is a rip saw. So we're gonna bring in raw lumber Okay, random width, and we're gonna cut the material to size. All right, so when I say that is we're making big boards into little boards in the lineal based on the width. So what we have here is a Barrier Rip Compact feeding a Barrier Rip 310 2 end moving blade rip saw. All right, so this is two pieces of machinery working in conjunction to rip your material. All right, so the first thing that I always like to talk about before I talk about any of the, the features of the machine is the safety aspect of this machine. So our Ryman factory in Germany is uh, one of the Weinig's daughter companies. It is one of the safest machines on the market. So what the compact does is it takes you out of the kickback area. Any rip saw that you have has a kickback zone behind the rip saw. So typically, an operator will be standing in this area, feeding material, and that is what we call the kickback zone. The compact takes you out of the kickback zone. All right, because now an operator will be standing over here. So in a typical shop, what we'll see is a scissor lift here with a pack of lumber, and an operator will load boards onto the machine, getting them out of this kickback zone. It's also easier on the back, it's more ergonomically friendly. Um, we also have multiple sets of kickback fingers on the machine and something that I'll point out in a little bit called Safety Plus. Safety Plus is a patented Ryman product and it really helps keep anything that's in the saw from coming back towards the operator. But so right now what I'll do is I'll go over the compact and some of the features of the compact. So on the compact we have 14 points of width measuring. Okay, and their eyes on the inside here might be a little hard to see. But all these 14 points of width measuring measure the width of the board at one foot increments. Once we know all those widths, we will know the shape of the board. Okay, so the board gets measured, then it will send the board to the fence. That's a moving fence, and it will move into position in order to cut the sizes that are desired based on your cut list. So we also have lasers on this machine, and the lasers are what show the operator what is gonna be cut. Actually, I'll turn those lasers on for you. And then as the, move, the, the fence moves into position and the blades move into position, the board will be sent through the saw and ripped to width, okay? So let's go ahead and open up the saw here and take a look. So typically on a saw like this, we can have, we'll usually run with one fixed blade and two moving blades. 
So the two moving blades are moving per every board that's being cut in order to maximize your yield, but you can have multiple fixed blades on there as well. So the idea is to um, utilize as much arbor space as possible in order to maximize your yield. So the old way of doing things was a gang rip where you build a sleeve and then force boards to run through the, the, the saw based on the arbor setup. Now what we're really doing is almost every board we're building an arbor to suit that board. So that's how you maximize the yield of your material. A few points we can look at. This is our pressure plate. That's what's keeping um, contact with the material as the board comes through. You also have multiple sets of feed rollers inside the machine. And if you can look in here, there's a blue, it's kind of hard to see, but that blue part is that's our safety plus. That's the patented product. There's a Kevlar sheet underneath that and then some plastic pieces on the outside. And what that does is help any little splinters, if they ever were to kick back, to stay within the saw. Uh, we also have multiple sets of kickback fingers in the machine. Like I said, safety is the number one goal of the Wina Group. And um, one thing that we also have that's very unique on this machine is the Quick Fix Arbor. So this is what we call the Quick Fix Arbor. And basically, it is hydraulic pressure within the arbor. All right? So as you loosen this nut up, you can actually adjust your fixed blades into position, tighten this back up, hand tight, and you're exerting hydraulic pressure on the fixed blades only so you can change the pocket. Um, the idea is very quick changeovers. Uh, we don't have as many, we have a lot more people nowadays that are running um, smaller runs, so flexibility um, is, is one of the most important parts to manufacturing, we find. So that's what this ma machine is designed for to easily change from one cut list to another. Well, let's walk over here and I'll give you a quick. A demonstration on how the quick fix arbor works. So what we have here is we've removed uh, for demonstration purposes an arbor out of our one of our machines with the quick fix arbor. All right so right now these blades are locked into position but if we ever wanted to change any of these fixed pockets all you have to do is loosen this nut and then you can adjust your moving blade, your fixed blades into position. We actually have um, little spacers you can use to help set that distance. If you tighten this nut up right here, just hand tight, and now right there we've got a one inch pocket. Then of course on the moving blade saw, the outside blades would keep moving. What, by setting up a fixed pocket on a machine like this, what you're doing is you're creating more strips produced per board. All right? That's just that quick fix arbor. All right, we'll take it back. I'll walk back over to the rip saw. A few nice points on the machines is one thing is is our arbor height adjustment is on a motor. Okay. No crank, crank handles. There's limit switches for the upper limit and the lower limit, so you can't run it into your chain and you know your upper limit, so that's on a motor. Also our height adjustment, you see on the screen, our height adjustment is also on a motor. Okay, so there's no crank handles here. Everything's motorized. Uh, briefly, we'll go over what we have here on the operator panel. So it's a pro face touch screen. We've got an e-stop here. This button starts and stops your saw blades. This button will start and stop your feed chain. This changes the thickness of your material. Okay. This machine is set up to run 10 to 50 meters per minute, or in, in standard, that's 33 to 164 feet per minute. Uh, this is a safety override for when you're making any adjustments. That's another safety feature of the machine. So right now, I cannot change the blade positions inside the saw. But if I needed to do um, a quick change on something, I could push this button and then make adjustments to the saw blades. Want to get over there and take a look at that? So this is just a good example of how our blades are moving per, per board. And it's 
pretty ingenious as well. So as the blades move, you can go around to the front and you'll see that the lasers move as well. So the operator can see where the blades are and where they're going to cut on the board. On a machine like this, if you're running 10 foot lumber and you're letting the machine run automatically, you can expect to get six to seven boards per minute. That's a fair number. Um, you can kind of extrapolate out how much production you can get uh, based on your needs from those numbers. All right, so let's keep going here. Um, what else do we have here? That's about it on this side of it. Oh, here's one more point. So this is our dip chain. So in order to cut down through the, the material, you have to get the blades below the top of the chain, and that's where we make this dip. I don't know if you can see it in there, but that's the dip chain on this machine. And um, we'll keep on walking around the back here. We have another e-stop here on the outfeed side. And then we also have a driven outfeed roller and a top idle roller for, to get your material completely out of the machine. Um, so it helps avoid any boards getting stuck in the machine and really gets your material out of the machine once it's cut. Another nice option we have in this machine is an outfeed monitor. So if you can see here, as we cut material, um, the monitor here is going to go ahead and show everything that's being cut. It also gives you information about yield, there's a board ID, what's produced, so what you use this for typically is, when we're running material, if you have a lot of sizes that are similar in width, this helps the guy that's stacking the material on the back side um, keep the proper board in the proper stack. It really helps with the, with the, uh, the sorting of material after ripping. Uh, this is a nice feature we've been putting on a lot of machines recently. All right, let's go ahead and get into the, the nitty gritty here. So we actually have the back of this machine open right now. And we're going to take a look at what's the guts of the machine. So right here, this is our feed chain lubrication. Okay, This is what keeps lubrication on the feed track of the machine. This is a, a, a float switch. If your machine ever runs too low on oil, this float switch will shut the chain off and not allow it to run. It's just a safety measure so you can't ever run this out of oil. If your float switch ever does turn off, all right, all you have to do is simply feed it back, fill the, the, the tank back up with this red cap here, and uh, the, the float switch will be satisfied and you can start running material. What we have here is, these are your moving blade motors. All right, so that's what's driving axis one, your first moving blade in and out, and this one is driving axis two in and out. And I can actually run that for you if you want me to. So we'll give you a quick example of it running. Here. So this is our arbor right here. This is the back side of the arbor. That's the saw arbor. Okay. So we do not have a one piece arbor and motor combined. What we do is we separate the arbor and the motor um, to help eliminate any type of uh, vibrations that could be coming from your motor. And it's all driven by, based on these belts right here. All right. We also have here, this is our oil pump to our feed chain. We lubricate the feed chain in four different points, as you can see from these lines here. So those run back up underneath the machine and are what are placing um, lubrication onto the feed chain. This is our, saw, this is our uh, feed chain motor right here in a gearbox. Um, these right here are limit switches. Those limit switches are for your pressure, your, your thickness of your material, your pressure roller is going up and down and then there's some limit switches over here for your arbor to go up and down. And that's about it for back here. 
Um, there is an electrical cabinet. We won't get into the electrical cabinet, but that's this part of the machine right here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run a couple boards and, uh, and take a look at, at what, what the machine's doing. So I'm going to close the hood up here. The machine actually will not start with the hood open. In order to start anything in the machine, there is a safety hood lock here. And that safety look, the, the hood has to be closed in order to start the machine. Just another safety feature of the machine. So, all right, I'm going to close the hood up. We'll go ahead now and start our arbor. The arbor, when I start it, you might be able to hear it, it's a soft start. So it kicks into like a second gear to draw less amps as the machine runs. So we'll go ahead and start our arbor. Alright, now I'm going to start my feed chain. So now I'm going to feed a board. Alright, so what's going to happen, I'll kind of call it out to you as it happens. Right now the machine is getting level, even, evened up. Now it's running through the fence and it's measured. The blades are going in a position, the fence position, the board runs through. there is it ripped a four inch piece and that's what came out of the back. On that board in particular we got an 81% yield and now I'll run one more board. Now we have a wider board we're going to run on this one. I'll go ahead and load it on. Board being measured now. The fifth position, the blades are about to move into position, and then it feeds. So there we go. On that board, we ripped a two-inch piece, a five-inch piece, and a two-inch piece. You can see what the screen says, and it yielded us an 83% on that particular board. So typical yields on this machine, depending on what, you, what you're what you running, but um, easily in the mid to high 80s is what I usually see, especially if you're utilizing a piece of random. And the random is typically what's used in a, in a cabinet shop application if you're gluing up panels of some, some sorts. We would utilize a random, and I can show you that on the screen here. So this is really the brains of the machine. This is where um, we're actually tracking what's being cut, we're telling the machine what to cut, and we're tracking how much of it we're cutting. So for example, on this cut list in particular, I was looking for the following sizes. One and three quarter, two and a quarter, three inch, three and five eighths, four and a half, a five inch, a three and seven eighths, and a four inch. We also have a piece of random from two to 4.25, so two to four and a quarter. So what that random is would be just a random width material, anything that's within that range that we're gonna later edge glue, typically uh, for a panel stock. But as these um, sizes are put in, I can show you here. What we have here is the width that we're trying to cut, that's this column. All right, the price, the price is basically based on what we call dollar-based optimizing or value-based optimizing. So it's a different way to say, instead of maximizing the yield, maybe we want to go after specific sizes because we need more, more often than another size. But it really is pretty simple, it's just a multiplier. So for a quick example, 1.75 times 100 is worth $175. 2.25 times 100 is worth $225, all right? In an optimization scenario, 225 is worth more than 175, so if the board is wide enough, it will go after the 2.25. So let's change that factor to the price of 1.75 being 100, and we'll say 2.25 was 10. 
Well, after you do the math on that one, now the 1.75 is worth 175, but the 2.25 is worth 22.5. Therefore, it might go for a 1.75, the optimizer, versus the 2.25. That's just an extreme example, but that's kind of how that, that uh, price works or the dollar-based, value-based optimizing. The next line we have is required lineal feet. So what we're doing here is we're tracking our lineal footage as we rip it. So as you hit a certain amount, for example, on this first cut, 1.75, once we reach 200 feet, reach 200 feet, it will stop trying to optimize that size. Okay, and we track it as we're running material. Another nice thing here is you can you can optimize based on length as well. So if you have some five foot material coming in that you're going to rip, and you have a cut list up, but you know you need only the 1.75 has to be larger than five, you can put a minimum length and a maximum length. It will only go for that size if it falls within that parameter. All right, so one last thing we can do is as we are ripping material, we know the raw length and width and what we produce. So we can actually track board footage as, the, as we're ripping material. And if we can take it a step further with our mill vision software, you can actually manage pack information. So as you receive in a pack of lumber, you can put into the, the, the computer, mill vision computer, how much uh, material is in that pack. And as we run material, we'll deduct it from that pack. So it's very good for tracking if you're, if, to see what your lumber suppliers are giving you, how accurate their tally is versus your tally. And also, if you're gonna run partial packs, you can know exactly how much material you have on the shelf at any time it really helps um, eliminate a lot of that end of month um, inventory that a lot of guys have to do. Or it helps you be more accurate on that. And um, that's about all that I have on the machine. Uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, I'll help you any way you can. Once again, my name is Travis Richardson, and I appreciate you guys spending the time with me today. Thanks, and have a great day.